Hey there kids, I'm just doing a quick video today for module six. I've had some excellent questions from my students about graphing, some very specific questions, and I said I think I can answer this with a video, that way I can help not only the students in my class, but all my subscribers, yay, thank you for subscribing. And if you're not a subscriber, click subscribe and then you can be updated when I upload a new video. Um, so the question was, uh, that someone was really kind of not understanding about where do I put the line? I don't really understand what these rules are. I don't know if the line's supposed to go, you know, this way or this way or, you know, what's this? Like, how do I know when I'm doing that? And I said, let's do a quick review. So quick review here. You can take these notes down if you want or pause or speed up the video as needed if you already know it. I am going to use this page from Lesson 17. It's the application template and it was on page 121 in my old book, but you might not have this one anymore because in the newer books, they did not have that. So um, X, remember, is a number line, and it's the number line that goes this way. It is the number line that is at the bottom of each of these graphs. So I could label this as your X axis, and that would be correct. What is Y? Y is a number line. It's the number line that goes up and down that is labeled with Y, which I could do right here. This one right here. And so these numbers that correspond on this line are always going to indicate the value of the y. Okay, so we'll get back to that in a minute when we put some points on the line. So you've got to remember that x is going to be the line that goes this way and y will be the line that goes this way. Got to know that. Next thing that you have to know is that you're going to have coordinate pairs or ordered pairs and they will be in this order. x is always first, y is always second always in that order. Now what is X? Like why are we using letters? X is simply a letter to represent a number and it can change. X could be 1 on one question and it could be 15 on another. So they're saying whatever number is that's going to be on the line or corresponding with the values that go with the X axis going this way. What is Y? Well, it's just a letter that represents a different number that is going to correspond with the number that is on the vertical line, okay? So then we have these X values and the Y values, whatever they are, these numbers that are going to change, and they will cross or intersect at some point if you follow the value of the number up and down the graph. This is where our graph is going to come in handy. So let's say x is 6. I'm going to use the x-axis to find the location of the 6 and then I'm going to anchor myself here. But y has a different corresponding number. So I'm going to follow my, my values, whatever your number line is counting by. I'm going to follow that until I get to the value of y. Okay, so these values are going to cross and intersect on the plane. Plane is just another word for graph. This is a plane. It is a graph. And so those numbers are going to intersect. Let's say I have 6 for x and 4 for y. They're going to intersect right there. And so when we put the points on our graph, that's what we're doing when we have these ordered pairs. So now back to the original question. My student said, you know, these rules are kind of confusing me. Focus, focus. These rules are confusing me. Um, when do I, you know, make the line this way? And when do I make the line this way? And when does it go diagonal? Because I'm having a hard time. And I said, let me, let me just show you. I said, if x is always 5, then that means that the x value of your ordered pair is always going to have the same value. So it's going to be 5 first, 5, 5, 5. If the rule is y is always the same number, then it's not the x value, it's the y value that's going to be the same. Now, if the x is always 5, the y could be anything. The y could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 100. You could have anything because the line will look the same. Why don't we plot this line on our graph? 
Okay, and depending on what your number line is counting by, you could have half values as well. Okay, so let's take this x is always 5, and I'm going to use my pink pen for this one. So if x is always 5, and I look at the points that I just put together, I said, okay, if x is 5 and 5 and 5, but y is 1, and then y is 5, and then y is 6, I can plot my points, and they will, all, they will make a line. So 5 for x and 1 for y, that's here. And 5 for x and 5 for y, that's here. And 5 for x and 6 for y, that's here. And you might notice that your points are all on this line. I could keep going with these points forever. In fact, those are the questions that the book will say. Now come up with two points that are on this line but not on the graph. And you say, oh, that's okay. I just need to come up with a number that's greater than whatever is here. So right here, our biggest number is 9 for y. So I could come up with anything that is bigger or greater than 9. Now this is a line that goes up and down. So if x is always a constant value, say 5 or 3.5 or 6 or 12 or 20 or whatever it is, this is going to be a vertical line. Vertical meaning up and down because it's going to always go through this numbered value which is what we have for x. Now let's take a look at y. If the rule for y is that y is always a certain value, let's say 6 this time. Okay, so if y is always 6, then whatever my point values are for x, I could change it. It could be 0, it could be 1, it could be 3, it could be actually 10 on this one. Okay, I can plot these points on my graph because for 0, 6, I don't go anywhere on my x, but I do go to 6 for y. For 1 for x, I can go here, because that's where 1 is, and 6 for y. I have two points, therefore I have a line. I could have 3 for x, and then I could have 6 for y. You can have anything for x as long as you have 6 for y, if your rule is y is always 6. If y is always constant, then your line will look like this. And so this is what happens when you have y is constant. So if y is always set, then your line is going to go through the y-axis. Through the y-axis goes through y, okay, at that spot. If x is your constant, okay, then your line is going to go through, goes through the x-axis at 5. So you're going to have a vertical line, okay, don't let this confuse you with the y-axis. Okay, so if this is your axis, okay, here's x, here's y, your line goes this way. Here's the line that you're creating through the 5. Okay, now the final bit for this uh, quick video is that we have another rule that's been throwing people off. What if x equals y? So that one is actually the most fun, and I love this one because it means you don't have to do any any figuring or calculating or anything. X is equal to Y, 4 is equal to 4, 10 is equal to 10, 5 is equal to 5, they are the same number. So that means if you're going to look at, say, this bottom graph here, whatever your X value is, your Y value is as well. 2 for X, 2 for Y, so your point would be here. 4 for X, 4 for Y, your point is here. 6, 6, 8, 8. When you notice the direction of these points, you say, gosh, that's making the diagonal line. And if I was going to, say, reduce the size of my graph paper so that it actually matches with 8 and a half, or yeah, this is 7, 8, 9, 
So that's 9 here. So if I actually have 9 and 9, it's a nice square, and this line is going to go straight through the middle, okay? Diagonally through the middle. Now because it has extra um, values for our, right, in the nick of time there, it has extra values for the x-axis, it actually is rectangular, so it looks kind of funny. But remember that if x equals y, you will have a diagonal that's going to bisect your graph into two equal pieces right through the origin. Remember that the origin is at the 0 and 0. 0 for x, 0 for y. We don't go up, we don't go out, we don't go anywhere. 0, 0. And that's what happens when x equals y. So I hope this was helpful. Please take the notes down as needed. Click subscribe, come back again, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.